Daf Yomi Tractate, Baba Basra, page 36a, top of the page with the words Ladidi Amarli. Um, the Gentile told me that he purchased a field from you. This claim de is deemed credi credible. The Gemara asks, is there any case where if a Gentile says it, he is not deemed credible, but if a Jew said it in the Gentile's name, it would be deemed credible? Um, just as a disclaimer here, I'm reading the Talmud. Um, there are a lot of um, strong opinions between Jews and Gentiles, and this is characteristic of the Talmud, and especially in those times, there was a lot greater, I mean, there still is, there always has been um, a divide or animosity between, um, but maybe it was a little bit more back then, and there was um, a, a lot of tension, and so because of that tension, there you'll find a lot of negative comments uh, concerning Gentiles and it doesn't reflect necessarily my own viewpoint or the viewpoint of many today but I'm just saying that because when I read the Talmud uh, the listener should know that this is not me saying it but me rather reading it um, that being said, um, rather, Rava said, if a Jew said to a prior owner, a Gentile purchased a field from you in my presence, and then he sold it to me, this claim is deemed credible, since if he wanted to, he could have said to the prior owner of the land, I purchased it from you. The Gemara records a series of halachot pertaining to presumptive ownership. And Rav Yehuda says, this one who is holding a sickle and rope and says, I will go call the dates from the date tree of so-and-so from whom I purchased it is deemed credible. The reason for this is that a person is not so brazen that he would call the dates from a date tree that is not his. And Rav Yehuda says, with regard to this one who possesses a field only from the fence built to prevent the entry of the wild donkeys and outward toward the public property, this conduct is not sufficient to establish the presumption of ownership. What is the reason? The owner says to himself, everything that he sows the wild donkeys will eat as well, and cannot establish the presumption of ownership for him as he is not profiting from the land as an owner would. And Rabbi Huda says, with regard to one who profited from the land by consuming produce from the first three years after it was planted, which is Orla, <clears throat> during which time one is prohibited from deriving benefit from the produce, this, context, this conduct is not sufficient to establish the presumption of ownership. This is also taught in a Brita with regard to one who profited from the land by consuming orla, produce, or profited from the land by consuming produce of the sabbatical year, or consumed produce that was prohibited as it was of diverse kinds. This conduct is not sufficient to establish the presumption of ownership. Rav Yosef says, with regard to one who profited from the land by consuming fodder, in other words, produce that has grown stalks, but is not yet ripe, this conduct is not sufficient to establish the presumption of ownership. Rava said, but if the land was located in the neck of Mahosa, a valley where it was common to harvest unripe produce to feed animals, this conduct is sufficient to establish the presumption of ownership. Rav Nachman says consumption of produce of land is fissured out, is, is, that is fissured 
is not sufficient to establish the presumption of ownership. This is due to the fact that produce does not grow well there. And therefore, owners do not bother to protest if a trespasser uses the land. Therefore, their silence should not be understood as an admission that it belongs to the possessor. Similarly, consumption of produce of land, or one expands a core of seed to sow and retrieves a core of produce when harvesting it, is not sufficient to establish the presumption of ownership. Here, too, the owners do not bother to protest, as the land is of inferior quality. Rav Nachman continues, and these members of the household of the Exilarch do not establish the presumption of ownership in our land, as people are afraid to lodge a protest against them, and we do not establish the presumption of ownership in their land, as due to their wealth they might not lodge a protest against, protest against one who trespasses on their land. The mission teaches, and of slaves, presumption of ownership of them is established by using them for a duration of three years from day to day. The Gemara asks, with regard to slaves, is there presumptive ownership of them? But doesn't Reish Lakit say, with regard to livestock, possession of them does not establish the presumption of ownership since they wander from place to place. Therefore, one cannot claim that his mere possession of livestock demonstrates ownership as one can with regard to other movable items because it may have wandered into his property on its own. The same halakha should apply with regard to a slave. Rava said, It is true that possession of them does not establish the presumption of ownership immediately, but there is presumptive ownership of them after three years. Rava said, Rava said, If the slave in question was a small child placed in a cradle, possession of him does not establish the presumption of ownership immediately, as it does with regard to other movable items. The Gemara asks, Isn't that obvious? Since he cannot move on his own, the Gemara answers, No. It is necessary in a case where he has a mother. Lest you say, one should be concerned that perhaps his mother brought him up to there. And his being on another's property does not indicate that the latter is his master. Therefore, Rava teaches us that there is no concern about this possibility since the mother does not forget her son. Therefore, possession of the infant slave does not establish the presumption of ownership. I just realized that the word infant is very close to the word infinite. Infant. Infinite. Maybe it's the idea of souls always coming into bodies again. It's infinite. God's kindness is infinite. Infant. Infinite. It's a thought. The Gemara relates, there were these certain goats that ate peeled barley in Narda. The owner of the peeled barley came and seized the goats and was claiming a large sum of money for the barley from the owner of the goats. Shmuel's father said, he is able to claim up to the value of the goats since if he wants, if he wants to, he could say, the goats are purchased and that is why. They are my possession, the Gemara asks. Doesn't Rishlakish hold with regards to livestock? Possession of them does not establish the presumption of ownership. The Gemara answers, goats are different, as they are given to shepherds and do not wander on their own. The Gemara challenges, but there is morning and evening to consider when the goats are unsupervised when traveling between the owner and the shepherd, and during the, those times, this halacha of livestock should apply with regard to them. Gemara explains the case under discussion took place in Arda, and Arabs who steal animals are common in Arda, and goats there are delivered from hand to hand and are never left unsupervised. The Mishnah teaches that Rabbi Ishmael says three months of possession in the first year 
three months of possession in the third year, and 12 months of possession in the middle, which are 18 months, suffices to establish the presumption of ownership. Rabbi Akiva disagrees and says that one month in the first year and third year, in addition to the full middle year, is sufficient. The Gemara asks, shall we say that the difference between them is whether plowing the land is sufficient to establish the presumption of ownership? As Rabbi Ishmael holds, that plowing is not sufficient to establish the presumption of ownership, and three months are needed for the crop to grow. And Rabbi Akiva holds that plowing is sufficient to establish the presumption of ownership, and therefore one month is sufficient. The Gemara asks, And how did you understand their opinions this way? If so, according to Rabbi Akiva, why specifically require a full month? 